Number seven, Dublin's finest room. The Academy Meeting Room is one of Dublin's finest and most unusual rooms, and it's packed with history. The simple wooden benches look very ordinary, but those at the back of the room came from the original Irish Parliament, or Grattan's Parliament. The Academy acquired them after a fire in the Parliament building in 1792. Henry Grattan, who had led the Parliament, was a member of the Academy. The President's chair that you can see at the top of the room came from the Irish House of Lords at the same time. It was the Lord Chancellor's chair. So just think of the people who must have sat in these seats and the heated political debates they had. This room, like the reading room next door, was added when the Academy moved here in 1852. This room was built as the library and the two tiers of bookcases were part of that original design. Unfortunately, access to the upper gallery is restricted to library staff. The room was designed by the Board of Works architect, Frederick Villiers Clarendon, and he modelled the room on the Grand Hall at London's Euston train station, which had opened a couple of years earlier, but which was demolished in 1960. There is a lot of cast ironwork in the structure here, especially in the gallery, and this was state of the art for its time. The ironwork came from a Dublin foundry, J and R Mallet, one of the great engineering companies of Victorian Ireland. And Robert Mallet, the R in J and R, is today remembered around the world as the father of seismology or the science of earthquakes. Mallet was an inventive engineer. He used to create his own controlled earthquakes by exploding kegs of gunpowder at some of Dublin's beaches, and then he would measure how fast the shock waves travelled through the rock and the sand. And as you might expect for such a scientific engineer, Mallet was a member of the Royal Irish Academy. And in 1846, at one of the Academy meetings, he presented his new ideas about earthquakes. And he coined words like seismology and epicentre that we still use today. But back to the meeting room. The room spans the full width of the building and it's three storeys high. The windows are all at the upper level to reduce the glare, which would have been important in a library. The chandeliers were originally lit by gas and they were converted to electric lights when the Academy was electrified in 1906. The lampshades are lovely Venetian glass. Another thing to notice are the busts over the mantelpiece and above the bookshelves at the back of the room. These are the busts of Roman emperors. There are 66 heads in the collection and you can see more of them in the reading room. They were made in the 1750s copied from the originals on Rome's Capitoline Hill and they were made by a Dutch-English sculptor, Simon Verpeil, and given to Lord Charlemont, the Academy's founding president. Charlemont put them on show in his Dublin townhouse, which is now the city's Hugh Lane Gallery of Modern Art, and his grandson gave the collection to the Academy in 1868. Charlemont was so impressed by the sculpture of Verpeil that he brought the artist to Ireland to work on his garden pavilion, the casino at Marino, and Verpile stayed on to work on many of the other Georgian Irish mansions. Today, the Academy uses this room for meetings, conferences and talks. It's also available for public hire. And this is where exhibitions from the library are displayed. Siobhan Fitzpatrick. We always have an exhibition here on display. It's important for us to show people some of the wealth of the collections and to connect the collections to the public. The exhibitions are very varied, everything from an exhibition on Moore's Melodies to Charles Darwin's impact on Ireland. Take a few minutes to explore the latest exhibition, then take a seat on one of those historic benches and let me tell you about Ireland's greatest scientist. <laughs>